kinematics is not as big as a topic as it used to be so in the old stu special study design there was kinematics dynamics statics like a whole lot of motion stuff whole lot of force stuff so that whole motion topic has been scrapped and replaced with logic and proof essentially so it's still something that you'll have to do because we still need to learn vector calculus but fortunately we don't actually have to know all of it as in detail as we did before but we just have to know the kinematic side rather than the force side i've still included some slides on force just to give you some context because it might come up in SACS and they still might ask about it in examinations as well but they will give you extra information to actually tell you what it is because it's no longer assumed knowledge okay so different motion variables and you will hear about this both in special and in methods so you can have vector quantities and scalar quantities so vector quantities you'll all be really familiar with vectors are essentially things that have a magnitude and a direction so stuff like displacement velocity acceleration and then the scalar equivalents like distance speed and acceleration so acceleration can be both so one thing that they like to do is like a velocity time graph and why they like to do a velocity time graph is because everything on a velocity time graph indicates something. So the gradient will indicate acceleration, the coordinate where it sits will evidently indicate velocity, and the area under the graph will indicate the displacement or distance, depending on how you calculate the area. So in terms of going from position to velocity to acceleration, you are going to differentiate. And then if you're going the other way around, you're essentially just going to add to differentiate. So that's a relationship between the two. So it's really important that you know the difference between displacement and distance. So displacement is the change in position from the original. So if I come here and then I end up, I go whoop, 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 and I end up here, right? My displacement is going to be two units from here. However, the distance I moved is this whole line over there, right? So it's going to be up to three, then backwards to two and a half, negative two and a half, and then I'm going to go up to three again, and I'm going to go back to two. So if I was counting the number of units, it would be three plus 5.5, so 8.5, and then I go back to three, so plus another 5.5, so 14, is that right? So 3.5, 8.5. Yeah, 14, oh no, yeah, 14, so you go 14, so essentially you go 3 up, and then 11, back and forth, so 14, and then we go back 1 unit, so essentially it would be 15 units in total, in terms of the movement, right, but actually displacement, because it's a vector thing, will say that it's 2 units positive, right, so it's very different, and you, f you look at different things on your area graphs as well in terms of looking at your velocity time graphs so in terms of our velocity and speed there's a couple different ways to measure it and a couple ways different ways to talk about it as well so you have your average rates of change so y1 over y2 over time essentially so instead of your y1 y2 over y1 you're going to have your x2 over x1 because your x generally shows your displacement so now it's your dependent type thing that you're going to be working with and so now over time right so essentially it's just like distance or displacement over time on that's your average velocity your distance over time is going to be your average speed so it's important that you find the total distance and then divide by the total thing so your average velocity is not same thing as your average speed because your average velocity will show like like for that previous one if we were talking about the average velocity between here and here it would be two minus zero over let's say three seconds whereas the other one would be 15 over three seconds so very very different and the instantaneous velocity is just going to be your your derivative so your dx over dt in terms of your differentiation and it's always um specified in meters per second because it's just the easiest honestly and it's the one that's it's like things with most things in mathematics it's just convention they chose one thing and then they just kind of moved with it so 
always just using meters per second as your conventional unit. Unless they tell you, you can always check with the question. In terms of acceleration, so our average acceleration is going to be um, essentially just V2 minus V1 over time. So I see I change in change in velocity over time and our instantaneous is going to be the derivative of velocity. So make sure that you want to know that this this idea of direction of travel is really important. So your direction of travel is going to be given by your velocity, not your acceleration, because your acceleration might be acting in the opposite direction to your velocity because you're slowing down. So just keep that in mind. So there is a couple of different things that you want to kind of think about and because they will tell you these things in like a whole blurb of information and you want to be able to extract the little pieces of information which are most important to the topic that you're doing and most important to what you're talking about, right? So initially it's going to be t equals to zero at rest v equals to zero uniform or constant acceleration a equals to constant where i.e. what's x, when t equals to something, eventually long term, so terminal velocity is a equals to zero t when t goes to infinity, and acceleration, oh sorry, acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8, or it's 10, depending on what the question tells you. So just in terms of acceleration, because it is by nature a vector quantity, you kind of do have to specify which direction you're talking about, and even with, so even when you see this in methods as well, technically you're still dealing with a bit of vector stuff because you don't make it obvious you're dealing with vectors, but you still say stuff like, oh, going up, going down, right? And that evidently is talking about direction. So making sure in these types of questions to specify exactly which direction is positive, which direction is negative, somewhere like clearly actually write it down makes it easier for you to cognitively actually refer to that so that you don't get confused which one is up and down and you don't get confused about which ones you have to make positive and which ones you have to make negative. Cool. All right. SUVAT rules. These are super duper helpful. Learn them, love them, be them because essentially your alternative is that you have to do differenti and differentiation or anti-differentiation to find all of these things. So what I recommend, have these in your bound notes, but get comfortable with using them because they're not on your formula sheet. So get comfortable with using them. They're called the SAVAT formulas because that stands for each of the acronyms. So S for displacement, U for initial velocity, V for final velocity, A for acceleration, and T for time. And you have all of these equations here. And most of them actually make quite a lot of sense because, you know, what you're actually going to say is that, okay, so what's my final velocity my final velocity is going to be my initial velocity plus my acceleration times my time because that's going to give my velocity change right so most of these formulas can make quite a bit of sense the most important thing is that you must have a constant acceleration to use this so if your acceleration is affected by anything which has an equation in it you will no longer be able to use these because your acceleration is no going to be no longer going to be by definition constant anymore so these are constant acceleration formulas. So just keep that in mind. Cool. All right. So you want to say, is your acceleration uniform? If, is it, if it's uniform or not, you want to be able to say, okay, then I can use my SIVAT formulas. Define your positive direction of motion and literally write it on the page because it will make your life easier so that you don't get confused when you're referring back or checking over your answers. Define the given info. So literally just write V equals this, U equals this. And what I recommend is just like as you read the information, just write out whatever it is. So S equals to this, T equals to this, whatever you want. And then what you want to do is you want to write V equals to this, U equals to this, S equals to this, A equals to this, T equals to this. And you'll find with each of these Savat equations that you have three variables generally. So one, two, three, right? And, you know, one, two, three three, four, so there's four variables, or oh, one, two, yeah, so one, two, three, four, sorry, you generally have four variables, so you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so you can see how there's, oh, there's four variables involved in each of these, so you'll have 
one variable which is not involved in the equation or not mentioned so you don't need to care about that but you'll know three other ones and your last one will be the question mark so you essentially want to just find the equation which has all four of the four of those variables in it and that will allow you to find what you need to find and you apply the equation and do whatever you need to do and you can draw things out as well if that's helpful So a special case of this is projectile motion and it's mostly savat related so sometimes they start off with something which is constant acceleration related and they kind of like merge into something which is less constant acceleration-y so they start with something which is talking about you know this person throws a ball according to gravity blah -dee, yada yada and then suddenly they have a wind gust of wind which goes at a velocity of bloody bloody and suddenly now you don't have a constant acceleration anymore so just be a little bit aware of that because that can be a little bit dangerous in terms of doing the question because you assume constant acceleration and then you get to a certain point and you're like oh it's not constant acceleration anymore so it's often when you drop or shoot something in the air or if it's like bounced off a cliff as well sometimes so normally there is no horizontal translation unless stated so unless there is something which is an engine propelling forward you don't really have a horizontal translation you just have the initial horizontal velocity which is going that way and because of there's no acceleration normally also there's nothing stopping the ball from going that way so stopping the ball from going horizontally unless it kind of falls into the ground right because then it would wouldn't you would think about it and you'd think about it and you're like oh technically there's still not really a force acting on it but if you think about it in practical means it's probably just like the ground and the friction of the ground which is stopping it rolling so if you think of a ball being thrown right normally the ball goes woo and it hits the ground and it does a bit of a roll forward as well because it's still moving horizontally but it's not moving vertically anymore so the most important thing is just to kind of recognize that so the speed is always constant unless there's air resistance. So there's no other forces acting on it. Vertically, the direction is really important. So just make one direction positive, one direction negative in terms of up and down. And that way you can decide whether acceleration is positive or negative. Uh, yeah, and you can just use your Suvat equations for finding all of this type of stuff to just think about what's happening. So at the top of the motion, that's when velocity is going to equal to zero up here. And then... You know here you have your initial velocity whatever that is and down here as well you're going to think that so and the funny thing with these projectile motion questions is that if you go up like this right the amount of speed going up here and the amount of speed going down here is often going to be equivalent because essentially it gains speed gains speed and then loses the speed in the same amount as long as there's no other forces except gravity acting on it so that's also something that can commonly occur Okay, so let's have a go at this type of question. So a rocket ascends with a uniform velocity of 15 meters per second. When the rocket is, so the rocket ascends like this. That's a horrible rocket, sorry. Um, so it goes up 15 meters per second. And then when it's 80 meters above the ground, the screw drops out of the rocket. Ignore air resistance. How long will it take for the screw to reach the ground? So this screw is reaching the ground, essentially. So it is going this screw is initially going up at a thing of 15 minutes per second and i'm going to let up be positive so what that means for us is it tells us no other things are acting on it so we're quite comfortable that it's constant acceleration so my initial velocity is going to be 15 right my final velocity is going to be zero because that's when i want it to hit actually rather than my final velocity being zero because it might be hitting the ground quite quickly um, and that, that's also something else that we want to find so I'll just rub that out because the final velocity would find the top bit rather than the bottom bit so I want my u to equal to 15 I want my s to equal to negative 80 and I want my acceleration to equal to negative 9.8 or negative 10 depending on what they tell us and the things I'm trying to find here is T and V. So we can go with maybe T first. So the equation for T is SUT plus a half AT squared. So we'll say that negative AT will equal to 15 times T 
plus a half negative 9.8 t squared and you can probably solve this um, just by hand but we can just pop it into our calculators just for you know efficiency sake so you can solve it by hand using Pythag or however you like to solve it but essentially you plug the values in and you should be able to get something quite nice quite easily and often they'll use uh, 10 in an actual exam one question just to make your life a little bit easier so you don't have to think as much about what's going on so the values you're going to get here is t equals negative 2.7 something and t will equal to 5 point something 5.8 something evidently t has to be greater than zero so therefore you're going to go with your t equals to 5.8 well let's go with 5.9 if we round it off so 5.9 seconds and then we also want our v so our v in terms of our equation is we can do yeah we can do this one so we can say s equals to u plus v oh let me think of which equation would be the best one to use for this one so we don't have to involve our t value as well so we want to find the one which just has u UAS, so this one here. So we can say that V squared V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So we want V squared to equal to 15 squared plus 2, negative 9.8, negative 80. So we can put that in into our equation. So we want 15 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 80 and that's going to be that so we can root that now so it's going to be going at a velocity of 42.8 three three four and it's going to be going downwards evidently to the graph cool amazing all right so these are the other acceleration formulas that you'll get and these are particularly popular in mcq questions they're really popular for those so it's really important that you know the different ones that you can represent acceleration by this this one this one and this one are probably the most popular ones so just make sure you know how to represent these so if you have your acceleration in terms of t evidently you can just use the dv dt formula for it if it's in terms of v right so if the initial value has v and t in it you, what you can do is essentially just flip it so you say dt over dv equals 1 over fv if you have fx or fv and you have v and x that means that you need to do a bit of a switcheroo and use this formula instead and you like you can ask me like why does this formula even work and essentially it's because dv is essentially dx over dt and if you times that by dv over dt being dv over dx the x's cancel out so it gives you the same thing and with if it's just solely in terms of x and it has v and x another formula you can use is this one and this one essentially just comes from the idea that you can do this same thing except you're just going to move it to the other side so you're going to anti-diff the v part already on the other side so you just essentially like move the v over so what you're going to do is you, you like move the v over in the process itself and then that kind of already gets rid of the v so you, you're anti-different v dv essentially which gives you a half v squared 